This is the ATtiny45, an AVR microcontroller from the ATtiny series of 8-pin AVR microcontrollers. If you have a small Arduino or AVR project, using a small chip like the Tiny45 is an easy way to reduce the size, cost, and power consumption of your project. Also, working on small chips is just fun. Today, we'll be writing bare metal C onto the Tiny45 using the AVR GCC toolchain. It's way easier than you think, I promise. If you don't have the Tiny45, but you have another AT Tiny chip, like the 85 or the 35, this tutorial will work for you as well. To program the Tiny45, we'll need two things. The Tiny45 itself, the target, and a programmer. In this video, I'll be using an Arduino Uno as a programmer. To set up the Uno as a programmer, open your Arduino IDE, go to Examples, and Arduino ISP. Choose the right board, for me it's the Uno. Choose the right COM port. Choose the AVR ISP as a programmer and hit Upload. Once that's done, your Arduino is ready to be used as an Arduino programmer. The Tiny45 is programmed over ISP, or in-system programming, over its SPI bus. To program the Tiny45, we'll have to connect two systems of the chip to the programmer. The first being power, so pins 4 and 8, and the second being the SPI bus, so pins 5 through 7 for data, and pin 1 for the reset control during the programming process. Here I'm connecting the programmer's ground, to pin 4 on the Tiny45. Now, 5 volts on the Arduino to the Tiny's pin 8, Arduino pin 10 to the Tiny's pin 1 for reset control, Arduino pin 13 to Tiny pin 7 for the programming serial clock, Arduino pin 12 to Tiny pin 6, this is programming data going in one direction, and then Arduino pin 11 to Tiny pin 5, this is programming data going in the other direction. Okay, great. Now we have our programmer, the Arduino, ready to program our target, the ATtiny45. Now we need to write something to program. To do this, we'll first need a few app packages. The first is GCC AVR, which contains the compiler to produce AVR binaries. The second is AVR libc, which contains the libraries required to write AVR code. And the third is AVR dude, which is a program used to program flash files to AVR chips. For this bare metal example, we're going to write the blink LED example in C and make an LED on port B3 flash four times a second. To start, we'll need to include avr slash io.h and delay utilities. These are both header files for libraries that GCC AVR will reference when compiling our program. Next, we need to set the direction of port B3 to be an output. This is done by setting a bit in DDRB or data direction register for port B to say that port B3 is an output port. The underscore BV macro is just a macro that converts a decimal value to the appropriate flag mask in binary, hence BV for bit value. If you don't understand what that means, that's okay. That's why we have abstraction. It's just understand that the BV on DDB3 sets it to the correct value for programming. Next, with a for loop, we start an infinite loop where we enable port B3 by setting a bit in port B. This will turn the LED on. Next, we sleep for 250 milliseconds or one quarter second. Next, we unset port B3 by unmasking the bit. Again, if the syntax here doesn't make sense with the ampersand and the equal sign and the not sign, that's totally okay. Just blindly trust me. Don't actually do that, but just take the code. Now we have to compile our program and convert it to a format that AVR dude understands. To do this, we first need to compile the C into binary. Do this using AVRGCC. The TAC OS flag optimizes the program for size, reducing its size as small as possible given the limited size of the ATtiny45. The TAC FCPU flag is to tell the compiler how fast the clock is running. In this case, our clock is 1 MHz. This is done so that things like delays, sleeps, and other clock-based timers are accurate. We tell it to output a file called blink. By default, AVRGCC creates ELF files. Now, we need to convert that outputted ELF, which AVRDude does not understand, into an iHex or Intel hex file, which it does. We do this with object copy. The tack R flag removes the EEPROM section of the ELF because we can't write ROM, hence read only memory. The rest of the command specifies to output an iHex format, so it'll take the ELF, which is an ELF format, and output an iHex file. Next, we finally get to flash the ATtiny with AVR dude. The flags here that are really important, there's a lot of them, but the ones to pay attention to are TACC SDK 500 v1, which tells AVR dude that we're using the Arduino as an ISP or in-system programmer. 
The tack u flash w blink hex tells AVR that we're writing the blink hex file to flash. Tack p slash dev tty acm0 is the device path of the Arduino. This may vary for you. It could be tty usb0 or tty acm1, for example. And finally, tack b 19200 is the baud rate of the Arduino ISP. This may vary for you, but in most cases, it's either 19200, 115200, or 38400. While the previous command was running, you should have seen the RX and TX lights on your programmer go crazy. To hook up the LED, take your LED and find which of the two leads is the positive lead. The positive lead is the longer of the two. Put the positive end of your LED into PB3 on the ATtiny45. Then, using a resistor, something small, like 470 ohms, ground the negative side of the lead to ground. Now you should see that my LED is blinking four times a second as intended. Well guys, that about wraps up this tutorial. If you learned something or if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe for more low-level content like this, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one.